What's up, you guys? Happy Sunday. Welcome back to Brunch with Desby. <laughs> if you are watching on YouTube, um, this is so unhinged of me right now because I'm quite literally sitting in bed. And um, <laughs> we really have just downgraded in this podcast, which uh, it hurts. You know, I miss my studio so much. And if you haven't caught up with the podcast lately, we did move. So welcome to my home video but you're not getting the sexy kind. Okay, I know we're in bed. I know we're relaxing together. Think of this like your bestie. We're having a sleepover, okay? That's how I want you to feel. So um, this Sunday, wow, we have a few things to chat about, most of which we have like a few news things going on. Um, However, I also did want to talk a little bit today about things that like I wish I would have done differently my first pregnancy because, guys, (laughs) by the time you listen to this, I am heading into my third trimester this week. Does that not have you so fucked up? Like for real, if you are someone who has watched me since even I announced it, that guys, I announced this after Christmas. I found out like November 3rd of last year. That's insanity to, for it to just be where I'm at right now. So anyways, we're going to talk a little bit about that too, but before we get it, get into it, I did just want to kind of, you know, disclaim if you're watching, This is just, it is what it is, okay? Let's just honor this stage of life that we're in. So before we get into everything else, let's go ahead, take a sip. I'm drinking out of my new Hydro Jug. This came out yesterday. I'm going to be honest, by the time y'all see this, she's probably gone, okay? She's probably sold out. If not, I will link it below, but you can always use code DESBY for 10% off. It's uh, STARS. Now, don't get me wrong. It is cute, but when I saw it, I was also a little bit shocked that they did kind of like this coloring at this time of year. Cause I was like, man, isn't this kind of a like 4th of July vibe just a little bit, like it's still cute, but it is definitely giving patriotism. Is that a word? I don't know. Mm. Oh, that water is good. Um, the only thing I will say about this is maybe it's a sign of my baby who is due on the 4th of July. Okay. We'll see. I did also put the little boot on it, the Hydrojug Traveler boot. And just a reminder, this is spill proof, guys. Okay? It's not going anywhere. So welcome back to the podcast. Also, was this like blending into the... I feel like I'm all beige right now, and then I'm just popping out with not just how big my boobs look right now, but my belly and my color that I'm wearing. So, (laughs) okay, this Sunday, the biggest thing that spoke to me this past week was the whole P. Diddy situation. Now, hear me out. By the time we're talking about this, by the time we're hearing it on Sunday, I don't want to overplay it. But the biggest thing to me is how this is most likely going to be a situation that's blown out of proportion. I say that in a, in a way that it's like it's wrong, that it's blown out of proportion, and then nothing will be done. That's the vibe that I'm getting, okay? We always get these nibbles of sex trafficking or this is wrong in in celebrity world or Illuminati this, Illuminati that. And guess what we get after that? Fucking radio silence. Nothing ever comes of it. No one ever drops names. No one ever asks anyone. You know, we're just kind of like left to wonder and also left to just assume. So then all the conspiracies on TikTok start going wild. All these things start going on. I'm just like, I cannot. So as much as we know what happened with P. Diddy and just a TLDR, P. Diddy's house house says got raided for reasons of purely uh, sex trafficking ring potential. Um, his One of his producers allegedly, or like alleged that he had sexually assaulted him during the making of his album in 2022, XYZ. There's a ton of different information. You can go back and read on it. Um, as far back as even Cassie, his ex-girlfriend, etc. With that being said, do I think that there is a dark side of Hollywood, celebrities, etc.? Absolutely. Will we ever get the truth? No, we won't. They, they all have too much power. They all have too much social, um, what, like social backup, you know, social backing. And that leads me to even my thought process of this past week of watching the quiet on set documentary. Now, this had me really scared for our future of, like, what our kids are going to have to go through, what our 
kids' kids will have to go through. Like, I don't know. There, there's a lot going on in that, okay? And I did see a news article, too. I'm going to kind of paraphrase it. Basically, Governor DeSantis or whatever, DeSantis, DeSantis, whatever, from Florida. I don't live in Florida. Don't give a fuck anymore. However, he did currently, like, try to make a passing or it did pass or something about kids not being able to be on social media before the age of 14 or 15, I think without parental consent, et cetera. Where, what is social media going to do to this next generation? You know, I feel like if you're my age or around my age, mind you, I'm turning 29 this week. Um, we grew up with social media, but not on social media. Does that make sense? Like, I feel like I grew up with social media, my scene, you know, online, um, all the, all the old, like, um, games online, stuff like that. And then we got Instagram, then we got Facebook, whatever. I grew up and I posted on it, right? There's still some cringe, like me from freshman year. I think that's when I got Facebook, MySpace, you know, I had in grade school, like seventh grade, eighth grade, that doesn't exist anymore. But regardless, we grew up on it with it, but not on it. We were still outside. We still went and got, you know, lunch and shit with our friends and it document everything, right? Kids nowadays are quite literally from the moment they get a phone documenting even their own life. Um, nonetheless, as parents, you know, we're sharing their life too through a digital age. Um, and that's where a lot of questions come in of what's going to happen with social media and what is going to continue to happen to kids who are pride on. So the quiet on set, it was, again, just another showing of the deep darkness that occurs online and in person in what's going to be done about it. What's going to be done about it? Even back in this time period, the early 2000s, where we're looking at these sets of Nickelodeon, it was by law that parents needed to be in the presence of their child. But was it done? The answer is no. So it's like, I know we're, we're consistently evolving and learning as parents and especially like child actors, um, parents and stuff like that. But you will always wonder like, okay, there's always someone who's like, oh, well, they'll be fine this one time. And then that one time leads to them being violated or something. You know, it's like, we can't escape it, but how can we control it maybe? And how can we stop having these pedos in our fucking school systems in as bus drivers as child show directors um screenplay people actors etc I don't know there's not a right way because you know what there's also people who are so fucked up in the head and so disgusting but mentally act sound and you would never know right that's why they always tell you the people who would violate your children and sounds terrible are typically the people closest to you. And you're like, no, 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 that, that there's no way. But it, but it happens. You know, it ends up being that fucking weird uncle. And I know, I feel like that's always the main joke is the weird uncle I, for whatever reason. Um, but it's always sometimes the ones closest to you that you would have no indication of, right? So in some cases, it's like, okay, well, you're a sex offender, so you can't work here. Fair. Okay, but you can work here. And then you find out that that person's a sex offender, right? It's like you can't pre-screen for someone who is a pedophile who isn't, quote, out of the pedophile closet. You know, I don't know. So anyways, having small kids, luckily living in a smaller area of the world, I do find a lot more peace than if I were someone living in a very busy area. Like if I, and listen, I know they exist everywhere, right? You could be in the most rural town of USA and get some pedophile, get some serial killer who's obsessed with kids. Okay. Look at Delphi, Indiana. That happened just a couple hours away from me. And that was a random ass town, small town, terrible thing that came out of that. So it's going to follow us everywhere. I get that. But my point is, is I'm grateful to live at least in a smaller slice of the world where I can control my peace. You know, I, I feel for those who are living in big cities and stuff, that would that would have a lot of a lot of stress on me. And if you know no better, you don't know any better, right? You're like, oh yeah, it's just like where I live. Like I live downtown New York. I don't know any different. Then you don't know any different. But if I were to make that big switch, right, that would be like a fucking culture shock for me. So anyways, quiet on set documentary. If y'all haven't listened to it, slash like watched it, sorry, I guess. Um 
it was just a fascinating documentary. I thought it was very well done. It was only four parts. Um, Drake Bell ended up coming out about his sexual assault from Brian Peck. And that was probably the most shocking and jarring discovery outside of what we can only assume now of a lot of other child stars. Um, For example, Amanda Bynes. What happened to these kids at such a young age forever affects you. I mean, it would affect you as an adult, but you take a young adolescent brain, it is fucking terrible to even think about. Um, And, you know, I can still think of times in my young childhood as a little girl that I had some weird shit said to me. And I only know it was weird now because I grew older and was aware of it. But imagine that branching into a physical space that is traumatizing. Um, and, and to anyone who has had to go through sexual assault at a young age, nonetheless ever, I just, my heart just like breaks because I look at my kids or I look at people who are the same age, you know, and it's just like heartbreaking to be like, that's so unfucking fair So Brian Peck deserves to die. I'm going to say it. It is what it is. If you freaking abuse children, nonetheless abuse anyone, you don't deserve a place on this earth. I stand by that. I don't care. Cancel me for that. Can- cancel me for wanting people to pay a penalty. You know what I mean? Goodbye. With that being said, it was just shocking to see Drake Bell, this guy who at the time, Drake and Josh specifically, I mean, the Amanda show was its own time in its own era. All that was its own time in its own era. But the Drake and Josh show, it hit so fucking hard. I remember just watching and waiting for the show to come on like it was like one of my favorite shows so funny um and Josh Peck is still hilarious to this day Drake Bell went MIA and now we know why right um but him being able to share his story and just being able to now look back at the the episodes all this time that so many of us out there were like wow I would do anything to be a Nickelodeon star specifically maybe some males I would do anything to be Drake Bell, maybe us girls. Oh, I would do anything to be Amanda Bynes. She has it all, you know, whatever. And to now think of what these kids, Amanda Bynes, maybe, right? I'm jumping to assumptions. But to know what Drake Bell specifically went through, it just goes to show again and again and over and over. You never know what someone has gone through, is currently going through, or will go through. And just to be so fucking kind to people, number one, and um, number two, just realize we all have like our own skeletons, you know, and it, it doesn't mean, oh, you're fake because you're not sharing, you know, whatever. It's it's just like we all battle our own things and um, to do those in private, you know, is fine. But it's sad that he he did that in such privacy um, that no one could support him deeper like his castmates, I'm sure, would extend such love to him, but they didn't know. Um, and, and at that time, I don't think Drake Bell expected them obviously to be there for him, but he just had to dwell in so much by himself. And it was just such an eye opening documentary. Um, that's on HBO Max. And if you guys haven't streamed, I'm telling you, it's so worth it. It was a really great, great piece put together. Um, and there were quite a few like journalists in the show that I just thought did like a phenomenal fucking job. Um, they just spoke really well, articulately. Now, Obviously, they'll edit it and chop it up and stuff, but (laughs) I thought they did a really good job. So um, definitely worth watching. Now, moving on, um, another thing I actually watched this week was the Megan Fox interview on Call Her Daddy. I'm not a huge Call Her Daddy person. Like, I respect the fuck out of Alex Cooper. She has re-earned my respect, and I've talked about this a lot. No one, I mean, she doesn't give a fuck who I am, but when the whole thing went down with her and Sophia... It was just like, okay, this is weird. I'm out. I, whatever. Alex has really rebranded herself, really shifted. And honestly, has just made a fucking killing doing it. So like hats off, but she had Megan Fox on. So whenever she has some good guests on, I'll take it. I'll take a gander, but I'm not someone who's like listening weekly. And I think we can all probably agree. It's not like a weekly show I would tune into because some of the guests I'm like, well, nah, like, I don't care. So with that being said, she had Megan Fox on such a great episode and it really expanded my thought process on Megan Fox and also how she is spiritually because a lot of people do peg her for being like satanic and like pagan and shit and (laughs) like witchy and witchcraft and to hear her insight on her life as well as how in her beliefs she has lived a lot of lives and 
uh, it, it was just, it was eye opening. Like if you guys have a time to listen to it, I actually listened to it while I was driving and then I finished it up at the gym. It was a fantastic interview. Um, and just really deep dove into her and MGK just enough where like you got some tea, but also like she kept it very much just who is Megan Fox, not who is her bae, you know? Um, but one of the things that really eye open was eye opening to me was she talked about all her procedures that she got done. And, um, I was shocked to hear that she had never had lipo done. Like, I'm not shocked because you can tell she's a very small framed person, but I, with everything she shared, I, I think she would have owned it, you know, and, uh, she has, she has a great body, but she has definitely had work done and she's, she admitted it, you know, but there was one piece of work that she wouldn't share. Um, and she was like, I, it's just not popular and I'm kind of gatekeeping it. But she was looking at Alex Cooper and was like, I don't think you would need it. So I think it's something like facially. Um, But now I'm like curious. So if any of you guys have any hunches, I'm going to need you to let me know. Or if you've seen like a TikTok, like plastic surgeon assumes Megan's surgery, like please tell me because I need to know. Um, But she looked fantastic. Great interview. And honestly, it was just something like if you guys haven't listened to it yet, I would just highly recommend it because it was it was genuinely a really great listen um, and very interesting to hear how people's spirituality can differ, like how she really like leans into like the manifestation and like universe and energies and all of these things. Um, yeah, it was just very interesting. Okay. Speaking of Alex Cooper, I did want a side part here into her Skims campaign. Oh my God, that was a bomb I did not see that was going to drop. Skims partnered with Alex Cooper for their wedding capsule. I don't know if you'd call it a capsule, but their wedding launch, okay? Um, Wedding lingerie, all white lace. Her and her fiance did the photos together. I mean, it was awesome. Um, She looked so phenom. And I didn't know she was wearing a wig. And when I saw that, I was shook. If you guys see the photos... You're like, that's not a real hair because her hair really mimics the wig. But obviously to get like a perfect amount of volume and the vision that they were going for, you know, I get where a wig would make sense. But very much giving like a 90s, let's let's call it like an 80s, 90s bride with like twiggy energy with her makeup. It was, it was honestly so stunning. The photos, the behind the scenes, the whole campaign was just so well done. Skims, here's one thing. They might, like, the Kardashians might have a lot of businesses that you, you know, raise your eye and you're like, why the fuck are they just all doing the same businesses? But if there's one thing Kim fucking kills, it's it's skims. Like, 100%. She has renovated the industry of, like, lingerie, shapewear, etc. And she's fucking phenomenal at it. And you can hate all you want. You can be like, oh, they already make enough money. But, bitch, I will pay hand over foot for skims because it is some quality shit. Now I've not tried their maternity stuff. I do know they have like nursing bras, I think, and some maternity items. I would really like to try this time. Don't get me wrong, but, um, it is, I will give it a hats off. Okay. If there's a few things that you'll splurge on, get yourself a few nice pair of skims. You don't need much. They really do last and hold up well. Um, but it would, that was definitely just a moment that I had to for sure, like, you know, touch base on. Now, we also saw Kylie reveal the um, global release of her Sprinter vodka, vodka in a can, vodka, vodka drinks. Um, so this is another one of her brands. They, they have their hands in quite literally everything that America would want. You know, we got clothes, we have makeup, we have skincare, we have baby stuff, we have clothing. I think I already said clothing. We have alcohol, we have tequila. Like, it, they all do everything. Oh, vitamins, of course, you know, Courtney. Um, they all do everything, anything and everything, which is great for them. Um, but it's just like, how how do they ke- honestly keep up with it all? Like, at the end of the day, they are still, like, working. You know, like, that still is, like, a job. You know, as much as they have a big team and, you know, oh, well, their team does the marketing. Blah, 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 blah. You still, like, they still have a part You know, like these aren't, it's not just like their face as the company. They genuinely seem to be pretty integrated in them all. You're still showing up for meetings. You're still doing, I mean, we see see shit behind the scenes all the time 
of Kim, of Chloe, you know, doing press release, doing this, doing that. Like they're definitely involved, you know, as much as we want to shit talk of like, oh, ha ha, they're, they're cosplaying being business owners. It's like, I, I would argue they're definitely doing some shit or else they wouldn't be doing what they are doing and, and it wouldn't be going as well. So yeah, their lives are just a masterpiece to me. I, I will always be obsessed with the Kardashians, not just because I feel like I grew up with them, but also because they really are a phenomenon of a family. Like it's very intricate and woven and so insanity to me. <laughs> insanity so insane. Uh, with that, okay, we are, here we are, we're on, we're in April. Holy shit. Let me actually check what the, what the legitimate date is today. Oh my God. It's literally April 1st. Oh, I should have started the episode out with a fucking April fool's joke, but also I couldn't really think of one on the spot. And sometimes April fool's jokes are taken too far. Like, honestly, I'm already cringing at the amount of family vlogger content we'll have today around their kids being like April Fool's something fucking dumb you know something so scripted April Fool's is kind of overrated I actually had an April Fool's back in high school where my boyfriend in high school broke up with me but it also simultaneously landed in a in a for real kind of disagreement you know as a teenager so I really thought he's breaking up with me and I was at Disney (laughs) look at me a Disney is adult that never wanted to admit it, but I'm always at Disney. You know what I mean? So I was actually at Disney. It fucking ruined my day. Like ruined my spring break, bro. And uh, he didn't tell me until like the next day that he was fucking around. Like it was not funny. Then one year I was with the same boyfriend. I had a long-term boyfriend in high school. I This is so fucked up. Okay, you would have totally canceled me back in like 2009. I actually sent photos of a fake car accident. And uh, said that I was in an accident. This is so fucked up to admit. Listen, we've all grown. Okay, we've evolved. But uh, literally, I sent like fake, uh, a fake car because we were, again, on a trip. My dad always took us for spring break. So we were on a trip. So I sent like, oh, this is our rental car. Um, I sent like a gash. Uh, I Googled all these images. I mean, it was pretty believable. Like, you know, again, give me 2009, 2010. Man, if I would have had, if I would have had Facetune or AI or some shit, that would have been some hardcore spring breaker April Fool's energy. Regardless, April Fool's a little bit overrated to me. Like, I, I, and I'm such a mom joke person. Like, even the other day I was at, I think my prenatal appointment and I had my glucose test scheduled for the first, but I'm actually going out of town tomorrow. So I had to get it rescheduled and um, she was like, okay, what, what day was it on? Right. And I'm like, oh, it was on April 1st. And I'm like, just kidding. And then she was like, oh, okay, well, what date? And I was like, no, like I'm <laughs> no, like I'm just kidding about just kidding, but it's April Fool's. <laughs> like I had to explain my joke and I, and I wanted to, th- I wanted to crawl up in my own fucking uterus and die. Like I was like, I am so embarrassed. I could melt into the fucking ground right now. So April fools is just, it's dumb. Okay. Let's just call it what it is. April fools is fucking dumb. All right. With that, it is April fools. It is April 1st. Happy April. Oh my God. I turned 29 on Saturday. I turned 29. I Listen, I'm checking in with myself. I'm self-evaluating. Am I okay? Am I doing well? I had to ask my mom. I was like, mom, are you doing okay? Because you're going to have a 29 year old. Like that's wild. Now my mom was 19 when she had me. So, you know, she's a young, she's still very young, but regardless, I'm like, are you okay, ma'am? Because that's as much as a a shock for a a parent. I feel like Maddox is going to be four this year. And even just hearing four, knowing that then next year he's going to be five, like, oh my God, I'm going to have a five-year-old. Like it becomes very real when you have kids, you know, you're like, fuck your own age, but you see your kids turning a certain age. You're like, holy shit. Then I'm blank. You know, it kind of ages you. So I'm going to be 29. That's wild. Um, and also we have six weeks of shreds launching, um, this next week as well, which I'm so fucking excited. I always love shreds. It's a good vibe. It's a good energy. It's like fat loss focus, which obviously like I'm not losing fat right now. I'm genuinely only gaining it, but it's always just such a good spring summer energy. So if you guys want to join, I'm going to put up code brunch with Desby so you can get 10% or $10 off 
joining, okay? Uh, if you want to join, I actually did also create a mini core guide for every challenger. So this is our fifth annual shreds challenge. And I was like, you know what? I want to do something big, Beyonce. Let's do a mini core guide. So I have six core routines and technically you get 12 core routines because when you click on the core workout, you get an option for home gym or pregnancy postpartum. So technically you're getting 12 different core routines um, because there's six, but there's technically two built into each one. Are you following? Okay. Um, so you can join that six weeks of shreds went up to $1,200. We have weekly giveaways, um, all the good stuff. Now, if you're kind of out on a challenge, you're like, you know, I don't feel like doing that. You can always do our membership. Um, right now you can use code brunch with Desby as well to get $10 off your first month. We actually have a Taylor Swift themed month for the tortured poets department, which is, uh, launching in about two weeks brand new album, pretty excited, pretty nervous, as I mentioned last episode, but regardless, we're going all in Swifties that sweat. Okay. So no matter what I got you covered. Um, I feel like as much as a lot of you guys see me as like an influencer, quote unquote, this is still like my business. Like my passion is helping women. I want to help women. I want to help women specifically in health and wellness because I operate off of the mantra, be who you wish you had that goes for anything in my life. But like, I wish I had a me for me. You know what I mean? Like I, I wish I had someone like me for myself. I wish I had a flat Stanley and myself, you know, that could operate. So, um, join that six weeks of shreds. We'll talk a little bit more about it. Cause I'm going to talk about like fat loss and stuff like that, um, in the postpartum period, but that is launching on Saturday. You can pre-register where you'll get access on, on, uh, sorry. It's, <laughs> literally mom brain fart. Okay. If you pre-register, you get access Saturday. If you don't pre-register, it goes live next Sunday. So, um, again, no matter when you join, you do get the shreds for core for shreds program. And then, um, it's also to open all week. So yeah, join me. I'll keep the brunch with Desby code live until next Sunday. All right. Um, okay. So moving forward, um, I don't really have any, um, other big announcements in terms of that two big things coming. We have new Paragon Fitwear, the Flora collection, uh, launching the fifth. Okay. So we have this on the fifth. This is Thursday. It's launching 2 PM EST, probably the best launch to purchase since wavelength in totality. Like it's Reluna, it's beautiful, it's spring colors, it's not see-through. It's good. Um there are a few colors that are like m- little more sheer, but also not sheer like Candyland sheer. Holy shit, that was honestly that was such a fucking flop. I cannot say that enough. Like I was heavily disappointed in that. That's for sure. Um besides the idea, overall flop. Um but the f- new floor collection's great. I'm wearing I'm actually wearing it right now like the bra and the Reluna leggings. Um, but it's just not like one of the spring colors. It's kind of more of a neutral. This is an old air silk top from Paragon, not available right now. So that launches on the fifth does be to save money as always, you know, catch me in the winter, catch me with these like launches with like beige colors and shit. No, I would rather throw my head against the wall. Like I need some color. I have been in a little bit more of a neutral era here and there, but like in overall, five out of seven days of the week, I'm going to choose a fun, bright, airy color. doesn't always have to be neon, but it's going to be bright. It's going to be airy. Okay. So that's exciting. We do also have very, um, awesome things coming for Petula. Now I can't share like quite literally jack shit, but I will say just everyone's stepping their shit up right now. I'm just, I'm good with it. You know what I mean? I'm really good with it. So let's go ahead, finish up the episode here with a few things um, I wish I would have done different in my first pregnancy. Okay, so I have 10 things written down and I wanted to touch on both of these. So if you're someone who is pregnant right now, whether this is your first pregnancy, second pregnancy, doesn't really matter. This still kind of like applies to everyone, but also if you are pregnant for the first time specifically. If you are not pregnant yet, but planning on expanding your family at one point, you're also gonna wanna listen because these are just some things that popped into my mind where I thought about what would I have done differently or what would have set me up for success, okay? So number one, first and foremost, I would have been more okay with three to four days of workouts a week, okay? When I first got pregnant, 
Um, I was in the best shape of my life. I mean, kind of in all aspects of when I was get, getting pregnant, I was getting there. You know, I was in, I was getting to a new phase of quote my best shape, right? But let's go back to the first time I was pregnant. I was in probably top tier shape of my life. Okay, so during that time, I was working out about five times a week. I've never really exercised more than that. There was a slight period of time during COVID where I would do six days a week only because I was doing like live workout classes. So I would do like an extra little bit of activity. With that being said, I really wanted to keep my routine of five days a week. Now you and I, we probably have different jobs. Okay. My schedule, my lifestyle, and specifically what I do on the internet five days a week is very applicable for me. I don't move a lot outside of when I go to work out. Like I sit, I sit at my desk or I stand at my desk. I'm always working. You know, I'm not really like just moving around throughout my day besides with my kids at this time. I didn't have kids though. Okay. Remember we're going back to that. So when I first got pregnant, I thought, oh my gosh, okay, I have to keep this routine. Now, the one thing that did save me was the fact that it was COVID and we didn't have a gym. We didn't have gyms at all. So I really was able to rest in a different way, but most people wouldn't nowadays, right? But I think having three to four consistent workouts per week would have been better than sometimes pushing myself to do five half-ass ones. I would have rather been in the gym three to four times with some really good intention, really good focus, really good form, than to kind of half-ass some of my workouts just to get there five days a week and say I did it. So if you can do five days a week and you feel good, you're listening to your body, you're modifying back, great. But if you get to the point of day five and you're like, holy shit, I'm exhausted today, honor that. And I've done a much better much better, um, approach with that, this pregnancy. Um, I've also just been more tired naturally. I'm taking care of two extra kids. I have a lot more work on my plate. Like life's different. Seasons are different and you have to honor them. The second thing I would have aimed for a small goal of 30 minutes of movement a day. So again, kind of piggybacking off of the idea of three to four workouts a day, but instead of also looking at the idea of like, Oh, my workout has to be a workout. Granted, for a lot of people, that's what feels best, having like physical, like weightlifting. But I wish I would have kept a better mentality of just like movement, adjusting expectations and honoring movement. We don't always have to be under a barbell. We don't always have to be with dumbbells. We don't always have to be swinging a kettlebell. It could be a small online yoga class. It could be a stretch routine. It could be walking outside. It could be walking around my house, picking up toys, doing laundry, like making it an active cleanup day around the house, stuff like that. And, and setting my timer for 30 minutes and just being like, okay, I'm going to move nonstop for 30 minutes. That can be a game changer for a lot of people who maybe are also battling like debilitating um, sickness, uh, could be a good place to be at as well. So th that was another thing is like just aiming for that small goal, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, maybe one day it's a walk, maybe one day it is a workout, whatever. And it could be more than 30 minutes, but at least 30 minutes a day. This is also very much recommended by the American college of gynecology, uh, gyne American college of gynecology, whatever, ACOG. I, this is why I always just call them ACOG. American College of American College of Obstetrics and gyne Gynecologists. Okay, there we go. Because I was like, I know it's gynecologists, obstetrics and gynecologists. Number three, I wish I would have balanced out my protein more. I've noticed this pregnancy. I've really stayed a little bit more aware of my protein intake daily um, ever since about 18 weeks when I could finally like stomach protein again. Um, and I've noticed it's helped me so much more with my energy levels, my digestion, and my overall satiation. So if you're someone pregnant or you're going to be pregnant and you're like, man, I'm eating like shit, that's fine. It's fine to eat like shit, but you have to really honor the fact that like you need to get back to a routine or else it's just not going to feel good. Okay. Um, so I wish I would have balanced out my protein a little bit more. You don't have to have this astronomical goal of like what would be maybe normal for you. Like maybe instead of a hundred 40 grams, maybe you're only hitting 80, but at least you're hitting 80. You know, like there's, there's still a win and a still a victory in that. Um, number four, keeping food logs once a week. I think this would have helped me a lot and has currently helped a lot of my pregnant clients because we're keeping accountability 
Um, most of them are doing food logs daily. However, at a minimum, doing a food log one or two times a week, I think would have kept me a little bit more accountable to realize how much am I taking in? What am I eating? Where are my protein sources coming from? Am I eating a fucking veg- vegetable in my day, period? Um, and so having at least a food log, it doesn't have to be tracking on my fitness pal. It could just be written down on a piece of paper. It could be in your notes app. You know, it doesn't have to be so deep. But having that opportunity to look back and go, okay, what time did I eat? what did I eat and how did it feel, you know, and just kind of be able to like, look back at that. And again, for most people, it doesn't have to be daily. Um, for my clients, you know, that's, that's what we're assessing so that we can go through and give some feedback, but it is a, it's a place where you can at least have some consistency and awareness, um, instead of making it about tracking your food. Cause that's not always necessary either. Now, if that works for you, you like tracking your macros, you like tracking your protein and it's, it's consistent and it's great. That's cool wouldn't be me, would be someone else. Okay. Number five, I wish I went in and got more pedicures. This is one luxury that I did not take advantage of. And I wish I would have done, especially when I had no other kids on my plate. Okay. Because the thing is when you have other kids, you have to worry about, okay, well, like who's going to watch them? Do I have time to go? Um, you know, whatever. I wish when I was like not pregnant, that's all I would have asked for. What do you want for a gift? A pedicure. What do you want for the, a pedicure? A pedicure. We have so much weight on our body. And this is why I love my fucking foot massager so much, okay? The feet, your feet, your legs, like they hold so much weight, right? And the only time we really get off them, obviously, besides when we're sitting, um, I mean, you know, hear me out, is when we're sleeping, right? And so um, the, the amount of blood flow that is constantly pumping down to your poor little feet while you're holding all this extra fucking weight is insane, right? So I just wish, just a little like self-care thing, I wish I would have done more. Number six, I wish I wouldn't have worried about the nursery so much. Oh my God, I was in such a fucking panic to get my nursery done by like month five, you know? And again, I was, this was COVID age, so we had nothing but time. So, you know, I can honor that, you know, that my my thought process was a little bit different at that moment because I was just stressed about I wasn't even just stressed. I just, I didn't have anything else to do. Okay. (laughs) So I was like, what can I do? Do the nursery. But I still had this like timeline in my head that I had to get it done. So I wish I wouldn't have stressed so much because Maddox was in our room till literally he was nine months old. Nine months. He was in our room. Not one time. He started to nap in his nursery, like in his room. Don't get me wrong. But overall he was in our room. So I wish I just would have maybe used more of like my, my postpartum time when he would like sleep a lot and I didn't have much to do to maybe organize it then and like use it as like a little bit of like a mental clarity project. Like, I don't know, just feeling a little bit productive. It just, even if you do get it done before they're here, congrats, but just don't put too much weight in it, you know, let it vibe. Number seven would be not to be on so much of a timeline. So again, kind of piggybacking off of this nursery idea, right? But like, okay, I have to make sure I get this done by this time. I have to do this by this. I have to whatever. And it was just, I stressed myself out way more than I should have. Now, obviously my, my time got cut short with Maddox by two months. So I don't know what that last two months would have kind of looked like. Um, But regardless, it's just kind of one of those things where the more you just let yourself enjoy it, the more you don't overwhelm yourself and it doesn't feel so overwhelming. It doesn't feel so daunting. Um, just welcome in this new chapter and be able to just vibe. I think journaling more would have helped with that. Um, and also speaking maybe more to that in therapy. And I also, that's another thing I wish I would have done. I wish I would have been in therapy during pregnancy. I really do like that. I didn't even write that down. It would have helped me so much fucking more to prepare for postpartum if I had someone helping me through the process of pregnancy because it is just as much of a transformation. Um, There's a lot that you, like, try to navigate. It could also bring up and foster a lot of, like, deep-rooted feelings you never knew you had, fear, um, you know, parental things that could come up. It's just therapy could have been so much even more healing in my prenatal stage as it would have been postpartum. Um, and as always, you can use code Desby on better help. I still use better help. Um, I currently go every two weeks and by go, I mean, I literally open up my app and meet with my counselor, which is very convenient. Um, but I stand by better help. I, I genuinely, I just love the experience I get for it. And especially postpartum, it is the one thing 
that fucking kept me going for real. Um, I had no one to talk to. And sometimes you don't just want to talk to your mom or your sister or your sibling or your, your husband. They don't get it. I just needed to talk to someone I'm biased. So that's definitely something I think I wish I would have done more. Um, number eight, I wish I would have gotten out of the house more. Now, again, my circumstance was different because of COVID. Um, but in reality, if it was my first time being pregnant again, I wish I would have just went and done more stuff while I could, because it really does change when you have a kid. Um, and it's hard to, it's hard to put yourself like, you don't know what you, you don't know what you don't know. And you won't know till you experience it. But I wish I would have made more of a goal of like, going and doing something even by myself, like one or two times a week, or even just, hey, every Thursday, I'm going to go to the coffee shop and sit like I I just wish I would have done more of that because you just you don't realize that leisure of doing that and how it will be gone not to scare you number nine I wish I did more labor prep work now I did do a lot more of this with Archie but I've even expanded my knowledge and horizon into this third pregnancy um and you're never going to be perfect. You know, first, second, third pregnancy, you're always learning about not just pregnancy, but also your own body. And so um, at the end of my time with Archie, I did start to do a little bit of labor prep stuff. You know, I was taking some raspberry tea. I was doing the dates, um, you know, all of these things for labor. But I also started implementing some like pelvic floor release, some stretches, not nearly as much as I planned to this time, though. The biggest thing is that In order to get the baby out of the birth canal, if you're delivering naturally, you do need to make sure that you are allowing the pelvic floor to release. So as much as we want to tighten it and contract it to hold our core and brace, we also want to make sure that we can like release it so that we can have baby come through the birth canal and not tear up our vagina. Okay. So with that being said, lead to a better time of delivery by not just staying active your whole pregnancy, but also doing some more labor prep work. So these are like different stretches, like abductor rocks, um, knees in, knees out, deep squats, just sitting, allowing all of that to release, um, all of those movements. So I wish I would have done more of those. And these are things that I'm going to also be having in routines in my pregnancy core program. Um, I plan to have a little section of labor routines, labor prep routines that you can use um, during your third trimester. And I plan to start utilizing these and implementing these around probably like 34 weeks. I don't want to do them too early. You know, it's still very important to um, make sure you're strengthening, but I also do want to make sure I'm, I'm doing it, you know, safely. So probably between 34 and 36 weeks naturally, I will have, uh, you know, I'll pick those up. Lastly, I wish I had more of a community, uh, maybe a coach support outside of family, because during this time, I really only had you guys. Um, and, and that's fine, you know, but I wish I would have even had my own intimate source of support. Um, someone to hold me accountable to hit my protein goals. Someone, um, that had that approach. The only coaches I've ever had have been male. I wish I could have had a female coach that have, that could have guided me through this. Um, and there's not a lot of people who do pre and postnatal coaching, like one-on-one coach we see a lot of people that are pre postnatal or that like it that do programs and like plans like that's fine you know that's great but I wish I would have had a one-on-one experience with someone who could have helped me like even in person like a pelvic floor therapist but again not only number one is not always that accessible number two I don't always want to drive somewhere okay and then also not always are they equipped nutritionally to support me. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of different reasons why having a coach that does it all (laughs) me is important to have. Um, and I think I say that also because now having taken clients through pre and postnatal periods, I see the benefit of it. You know, it's not just a plan. It's not just a, Oh, this is something that, you know, anyone could do. It really can make a fucking huge difference in your pre and postnatal journey. Um, and I think, again, that's why at the end of the day, my passion continues to lie with women and encouraging them to move their bodies and find comfort in their body and transformation in their body, et cetera. Um, but also specifically speaking to the pre and postnatal woman, because it is such a huge time where your body is shifting, your mind is shifting, everything is shifting. And you want to be able to like kind of hold tight on that and feel in somewhat control, you know, you, you want to be able to learn how to fuel your body. You want to be able to learn how to recover it. And so for most people, you know, that ask me, oh my God, how did you bounce back after pregnancy? It's like, I did the work during it, you know? So if you're also expecting to come into just a singular program 
or a single coaching experience purely just postpartum, if you didn't do the work during pregnancy, it's going to be a fuck ton harder, you know, and the work during pregnancy doesn't just have to be coaching. It could be a program. It could be a challenge, you know, and it could be something, but if you're not moving during pregnancy, you're not going to make your job after much easier. And I say that with love, but we know when we come become postpartum, and even if you're not pregnant right now, never have been and aren't yet, et cetera, we know in our postpartum phase, we want ourselves back and we want it back fast. And in reality, that's not going to happen. Okay. So you have to, you have to honor that, but also, are you willing to put the work in while you feel like it's not happening? Right. Are you willing to show up when it feels like there's no reason to, are you willing to continue to put yourself first when you have mom guilt, even though you know, you need it to be a better mom. That's what the accountability is for me and for DBFT. Like that is what I, f- I find so special about what I do and the women I get to work with is like having the opportunity to teach them, number one, the balance, and number two, the importance of why you still need to fill your own cup. And we could say it all day till we're blue in the face. Oh, <laughs> fill your cup before other people put your, ma- put your oxygen mask on before other people. How many of you guys are fucking doing that? Okay, answer answer me. Look me in the eyes. <laughs> Look me in the fucking eyes with a straight face and all y'all tell me how many of you are truly filling up your own cup before other people. Yeah, maybe like two out of 10 of you can probably genuinely be like, yeah, I, I am. Fuck everyone else. And you're probably Aries and we're probably birthday twins. So shout out to us, okay? All the rest of you guys are living under other people's standards and putting yourself last, which is why you're unhappy. And a lot of that comes from physical health, well-being, okay? Again, I'm, I'm not telling you you got to be in the gym five times a week, but you have to take care of yourself, and it starts with routine. So throughout all of these, you know, one through 10, all of them are important. All of them are important, but the last one rings true. You need to find support, you need to find accountability, and you need to find community. Without those or without just, you know, one of them, it is really hard to want to keep going. And even right now, the support I have through you guys, through DBFT, through the community, through you guys listening to just as a brunch with Desby listener, et cetera, that's what keeps me going. So find that, dive into that, dive into our challenge, six weeks to shreds, surf the shreds waves with us. (laughs) Again, fat loss challenge as I'm simultaneously doing nothing but gaining fat um, and a baby, but Join our stretch challenge. Again, I'll, I'll leave that code open all next week. Um, brunch with Des B you can use for a discount. Uh, I want to extend that to you guys. And if you have any questions, also, like, let me know. But um, next week, why it's going to be back. He was going to be on this week, but we had a little bit of a technical difficulty with my recording equipment. As you see, as I was on my bed, and then as you see, as my camera died, I'm still trying to figure out, like, my room temperature so, like, my camera doesn't overheat trying to figure out lighting. It's just, it's been a shit show. Okay. But you know what? If there's one thing I'm going to do, it's going to, I'm going to show up. And it was one thing I wasn't going to do this week because I had technical difficulties and I was like, fuck this. I'm so over it right now. But I was like, you know what? No, I owe it to myself to keep going. It's been almost four years. I can't just stop now. Okay. Um, so hope you guys have a great Sunday. Thanks for listening. Thanks for hanging out with me. Let me know what you think about, uh, pedophiles deserving death. (laughs) No, I'm just kidding. What a fucked up way to end. Um, I will see you guys next week and that's not a joke. I promise I'll be here and I hope you are too.